Frank Yo Clancy live from Cincinnati, Ohio, the Riverfront Coliseum. Round three scheduled for 15. Aaron Fryer, the challenger in black, the champion, Kid Pambalay Cervantes in white. Fryer yet to taste defeat, the champion in his 21st title bout. He won 18 and lost twice in championship action, losing to Will Fredo Benitez. Cervantes looks very, very awkward when he's, when okay. he's leading. He has to keep his form and look to counter punch. But when he tries to throw leads, he looks very, very awkward to him. Cervantes won the title originally in 1972 from Alfonso Peppermint Frazier. Defended it 10 times before losing to Benitez in 76. Then he won the vacant crown in 1977 from Carlos Jimenez and has defended it six times successfully since. Fire digging to the body with an effective flurry. Cervantes standing there right with him. Digging a left hook to the body. There's that whirlwind prior attack. You don't know where they're coming from. And he just ran into a good right hand. Okay, Great right hand. There is some blood above the right eye of Cervantes. Cervantes has a bad cut over his right eye. Okay, let him out. And it's running down. Tim, it could bother him. Could affect his vision. It's a bad cut. Good right hand from Cervantes. He knows he's in trouble with that cut. Fire will not let up. Well, we said Pryor was a good finisher, Tim. They come from all over. Round number three. The champion back to the ropes and the blood flowing into his right eye. Pryor keeping relentless pressure on, but takes another right hand. Cervantes has not been able to hurt him since that. Well, he didn't even hurt him on the knockdown punch. Then nobody could put, keep up this pace for 15 rounds. This fight... Well, definitely he's going to end in a knockout. I'm going right out on a limb. That's the way it is. to go in round three, Gil. A lot of blood from the eye of Cervantes. The cut appears to be above the right eye, and it's running into the eye. That's a bad cut. Cervantes finally tying Fryer up. First time he's done that here, despite being in so much trouble. Under 30 seconds to go, round three. Attack. There's a right hand, and that punch opened the cut over the right eye, the upper corner of the right eyebrow, the champion Cervantes. And his handlers, Mel Melky and his son, worked feverishly on a between round, but it is bleeding again already. Tim, it's a bad cut, and the referee did not go over to check the cut, nor did he call the doctor. And he, I guess he feels this is a championship fight. You've got to give the champion every chance. The referee is Larry Rosadilla from Los Angeles. Lots of blood again on the face of the champion Cervantes. The cut is wide open again, Tim. It has to affect his vision. There is young Aaron Fryer Jr. watching his daddy in action. the issue as he has since the opening bell. The counter-punching Cervantes has landed some but has not been able to stop fire or slow him down at all despite the knockdown in the first round. Good counter-punching right hand landed from Cervantes but okay. fire just Punch right back with pressure. Now. Just seems to brush the off him and he's changing his direction as he moves in and that's confusing Cervantes. He's also jabbing pretty well for a guy that's considered a slugger. He's getting to that cut, and he landed a good combination. And I told you, Fry is a good finisher, Tim. He's got him he's down. A good finisher. A good punch. Oh. Tremendous right hand. Looked like an uppercut that sent the champion to the canvas, and he's trying to shake the cobweb. He might not make it up. He does not. It's all over. There is a new junior runaway champion, the hometown hero, Aaron Fryer, with a fourth-round knockout. 
of the Latin legend Kid Pembele Cervantes in his 21st title fight. And there is Bedlam in the Riverfront Coliseum. They have their first champion since 1955 when the lightweight Wallace Bud Smith was the local hero and five years prior to that heavyweight Edward Charles. It's been a long time between drinks for fight fans in Cincinnati and Aaron Fryer has brought them a title. Well, he had himself tremendously psyched for this fight and he was also able to come out and do the job physically. They had the championship belt in there. As you can see, there's chaos in the ring, but Fryer has the belt. A brand new belt that was prepared for this fight. And Aaron Pryor will wear it with great pride here in Cincinnati, where a crowd of about 10,000 is just going bananas. It's a hot, hot day in Cincinnati, and yet these people came indoors to the air-conditioned Riverfront Coliseum hoping to see a new Cincinnati champion. And they have one in 25-year-old Aaron Fryer, who moved up from the lightweight ranks to get this title shot, an optional defense for the champion Cervantes. And uh, Fryer is on record as saying, even if he wanted, he'd like to go back and win the lightweight crown. So Gil Clancy, uh, your reflections will have some more time to chat, but what's your impression right now? Well, Pryor is the kind of a guy that goes all out from the, from the opening bell, Tim. He doesn't believe in pace. He thinks he's supposed to be in condition to go 15 rounds at that pace. I don't think he'll ever have to. He knocks everybody out. Okay, Gil. Well, we'll be back here to chat with a happy champion in just a moment. We are back at the Riverfront Coliseum live in the CBS Sports Spectacular where we have a new American champion, champion of the world Aaron Fryer from Cincinnati, Ohio. Well, you can see uh, this is a fairly chaotic scene as you might expect with a hometown victory. Announcer Jimmy Lennon trying to make his announcement and having difficulty doing so. in round four winner by KO and the new junior welterweight champion WBA Cincinnati Hawk Aaron Pryor all right Aaron Pryor is, is now official 147 of the fourth round and we're trying to get him down here. It is a mob scene. And we're going to try and get the champion over here to uh, talk to us. Uh, he Come on, was very much ready for this fight. Aaron, Psychologically uh, and Aaron, physically, obviously. Mikey, let him sit in there. Aaron Pryor with his manager, Buddy LaRosa, and having difficulty just getting a seat here with his happy crowd. Now, all we need is a camera to show them to you. There we are, right up above. Aaron. All right, Aaron, while we work on getting our camera in position, congratulations to you. You said you were ready for this. Was there a doubt in your mind at all? No, I wasn't a doubt in my mind. I worked too hard, but I worked hard in this, and I haven't worked for anything in my life because everybody doubted my career at the end of the Olympics, you know, when I lost the holidays and the closed decision. Nobody wanted to give me a break. So... I had to make my breaks. You followed me. You know I followed how Davis around the country. I asked Sugar Ray Leonard for help. All my friends was in the Olympics with me. Nobody gave me a break, so I started working for myself in the gym. And these are the results. 25 Aaron, with 23 knockouts. Aaron, let's uh, we just saw that knockout again. It looked to me like a right uppercut that sent him to the canvas. Did we see that right? Yeah, you saw it right. A right uppercut and an overhand right. One behind another. And you had that cut opened up uh, in the third round uh, with a really right. very good straight right hand. Right, that's when I knew that I could hurt him. You know, I knew that I had the power as a junior walked away. And my trainer, Panama Louis, my manager, Buddy Rosa, did a superb job. And I want to thank Muhammad Ali Sports for making this possible. 
those guys went all the way down and had enough confidence in me to come to Cincinnati, give Shavanti more money than he ever had in his whole career. Uh, Muhammad Ali's got another champ. Harold Smith is just a beautiful person. And I think good right, people Aaron. like them is going to make other champions like me. Thank you, Harold. Thank you, everybody in Cincinnati. Thank you, in CBS. All right. You're an excited, happy young man. Now, I you said, you said that even if you won this title, that you'd still like to win the lightweight crown. I'm going to go out to Jim because I feel like I am the lightweight king when I originally went out. I was ranked number three in the lightweights. And uh, Gil Clancy gave me a chance to prove myself to him by bringing me into New York and, and calling the press company. Also, okay. really, I would like to fight Mammy, though. That's what Gil, Gil had offered that man okay. so much money to fight me. Well, you look like you wanted to fight I all the chances. Congratulations to you. All right, Aaron. We'll be back here. At the